Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to um, say a few words about um, a very important tool which mathematicians are using in many, many different places. Um, it's called coordinates or coordinate systems. Um, there are many different coordinate systems and uh, um, as I will be using these coordinate systems throughout many different lectures in algebra, geometry, or somewhere else, trigonometry, um, I probably would suggest you to refer back to these lectures devoted to coordinates just to refresh your understanding of what this actually is all about. So, what kind of coordinate systems um, exist in mathematics and uh, used uh, and what they are basically all about. Um, there are actually quite a few. So I will start with something which is by far the most um, frequently used system of coordinates. Uh, it's called Cartesian after uh, the French mathematician um, Descartes and, uh, and basically here it is. How how to construct this particular uh, coordinate system. Um, first of all, there are different coordinate systems in different um, spaces, if you wish. I will use the word space very um, carefully because I would like to really specify what I'm talking about. Um, space is a different uh, co co concept and, and uh, and basically there are many different aspects of this word. But I will concentrate on three major incarnations, if you wish, of the word space in mathematics. I'm not talking about real life or anything like this. So in mathematics, um, we are talking about these three main um, types of spaces. And I'm talking about elementary mathematics only. One is called a line. This is a straight line. Another is a plane. This is, for instance, the surface of this whiteboard is a plane. And uh, the third one is the space we live in. Um, we usually call it a three-dimensional space, but I will explain what actually that means in mathematical terms. So let me start with coordinate system um, in the line. Now, what is actually the coordinate system? The coordinate system is the way to numerically uh, characterize a geometric object. A geometric object on the line is something like a point, right? Or a segment, or I don't know, something, many segments, or something like this. So, how can we numerically characterize these things? Well, the first thing we should start is to numerically characterize a point. So let me start with this. What is a numerical characteristic of a point on the line? How can it be constructed? Actually, it's very simple. What you do is, number one, you choose one particular point on the line, which you call origin, or the beginning of coding. This is also sometimes called a zero point. Now, line by this point is divided into two pieces. On one, on one hand, uh, it, it's called the positive direction, and usually it's signified by an error or something like this. On another side, it's a negative direction. Now, we also have to have a unit of measurement, some kind of a segment, doesn't really matter what it is, which signifies a segment of a unit length, length equals to one in whatever numbers. I mean, it's just one, that's it. Now, what we can do is every point can be characterized by this distance, and distance can be measured in these units. 
not necessarily in integer number of units. It can be a, a rational or irrational number, whatever the number is. And we were talking about uh, different numbers, um, and we will probably discuss all these different numbers, what they are about, etc. And um, by the way, I will use certain concepts here, like for instance, irrational numbers, which you might learn a little, a little further down the line. In which case, you can always return back to the uh, coordinate lectures, which are using these concepts. So in this case, we are saying that the, uh, this particular segment from O to A, O is origin and A is any point, can be measured in these units. And if A is on the positive side of the line, we will um, characterize the position of the A as this particular length with a plus side, with a positive sign. And if some point B is on a different on the negative side of the of the line, we will characterize this length with a minus sign. So, length with a proper sign is a sufficient information uh, to identify the position of a point on a line relative to specific origin, relative to specifically chosen positive direction of the line, and a unit of measurement. Well, that's it, basically. This is a coordinate system on the line. That's absolutely enough. Because now, what we can do, for instance, how can I characterize the position of a segment on the line? Well, what is a segment? Segment, basically, is characterized by two points, the beginning and the end of the segment. Each point has its own characteristic um, as, as a coordinate, numerical characteristic which means the segment can be characterized as a pair of numbers, one number being one end of the segment and another number being another um, uh, coordinate of another end of the segment. So in this case, segment is, co is a, a, a set of two coordinates. Now, if, if I have more than one segment, obviously it can be expanded. So that's it. This is a, a Cartesian coordinate system which I have introduced on the line, and using this origin, the positive direction, and the unit of measurement, I can numerically um, I, I characterize position of any point. Let's move on. Two-dimensional. Two-dimensional uh, is a plane. Um, by the way, why is, uh, I didn't mention it. This line is called one-dimensional space because it's enough to have one number to characterize the position of the point. Now, let's talk about uh, two dimensions. Now, in two dimensions, and I'll use this whiteboard as a surface, um, the Cartesian coordinate uh, is built the following way. First, we have two perpendicular lines. Now, the intersection is called origin. Now, we also have unit of measurement. Now, in mathematics, usually, unit of measurement is the same for this line as well as for this line. So we are introducing a Cartesian system on each line. On this line, we have a positive, we have origin, positive direction, and, and the unit of measurement. And on this line, we also have positive uh, direction uh, from the same origin, by the way and usually the same unit of measurement. Um, in practice, uh, the unit of measurement can be really different on different um, uh, axes. So this is, this is called x-axis. And this is called y-axis. Now, traditionally, if you are drawing something on the paper, the x-direction, x-axis is horizontal and directed, positively directed towards the, the right hand. And uh, y-axis is traditionally vertical, and the positive direction is upward. Now, that's good. We're still, uh, we still didn't define, uh, d didn't define the coordinate system. So, coordinate system is supposed to numerically identify or characterize any point, right? So, what can we do? 
Well, here is the explanation which is partially geometrical, which means you have to know geometry to really understand that this is the right definition. But in any case, I will just use the geometry uh, which is presented in this course as, as given. So what we are doing here, so we are using the concept of perpendicularity of these lines, which is a geometric concept. And then we are using another concept of dropping the perpendicular. Sometimes it's called a projection of the point A. This is projection on the x-axis, and this is projection on the y-axis. Now, in geometrical terms, this is a rectangle, which means this is parallel to this, this is parallel to this, this is the right angle, this is the right angle, this and this. Now, how can I characterize this particular point? Well, this point is uniquely characterized by its two projections on two uh, axes. Now, each projection is uniquely characterized because this is a Cartesian, uh, there is a Cartesian system of coordinates on this line, so I can measure this distance, OX, in these units with a proper sign, whether positive or negative. Now, this is exactly the same thing. So I have two coordinates. One is called x-coordinate, which is this, and another is called y-coordinate, which is this, which, by the way, are equal to this y and this x, because it's a uh, rectangle. Now, in this particular case, my both x and y are positive because projection on the x-axis is on the positive side, and projection on the y-axis also on the right side, on, on the positive side. But if I will have the point somewhere here, for instance, my projection on the x-axis would be negative, and projections on the y-axis uh, would be positive. So in this case, x is negative, y is positive. Now, these are four parts of the plane these two lines are divided into. And they are called quadrant. This is the first quadrant. I'll use the Roman numerals. This is the second. This is the third. And this is the fourth. So whenever we're talking about, let's say, a point is in the fourth quadrant, it means it's here. It means its x coordinate is positive and y coordinate is negative. Well, that's it. We have defined a system of coordinates in the, uh, on the plane. Now, it's two-dimensional because we need two numbers. Um, and it's time to go to three dimensions. So let's go to space. Now, space is something where we live. And how can we identify a point, a position of a point somewhere in the space um, using something similar to uh, the systems which we were talking before. So we are introducing right now a Cartesian system on the, uh, in the space. Here is how we can do it. Now, I will try to draw something three-dimensional on the two-dimensional board. And here is how. Well, let's imagine that we also have somewhere a position which we call origin, a point of origin. Now, we will have a plane which goes through this point, which I will call xy plane. And on this plane, I will introduce a Cartesian coordinate um, two-dimensional one, which I have just explained before. So let's assume that on this plane, this plane, and these are axes, um, we do have this uh, um, Cartesian system, two-dimensional Cartesian system. Now, from the origin, perpendicular to the plane, so let's say if my black, if my white board actually is a plane, then this is a perpendicular to the plane. If my floor is the plane, then this is a perpendicular to the plane. So in this case, if this x or y 
is the plane which I was talking about, then this is called a z-axis, which is originated from the origin, obviously, and perpendicular to the plane, uh, which in particular means it's perpendicular to each line on the plane, by the way. Um, let me just demonstrate it very quickly. If my plane is the whiteboard, and this is a perpendicular, then every line uh, which is uh, uh, going through this point would be perpendicular to my perpendicular to, to the, uh, perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so that's how we start. Now we obviously introduce positive directions on all three axes: x-axis, y-axis, and, and z-axis. Now let's talk about a point. Now let's say we have somewhere a point here. It's hanging in the air. I mean, it's on my whiteboard, but again, I'm trying to um, convey a three-dimensional picture on a two-dimensional board. So, let's drop the perpendicular to this plane from this point. All right? And from this, I'll drop perpendiculars to x-axis and y-axis. So, if this is A, and also perpendicular to Z. This is AX, this is AY, and this is AZ. So basically we are projecting this point to each of the three mutually perpendicular axes. On each of them we have Cartesian system of coordinates and therefore these three numbers, AX, AY, and AZ, characterize position in space. That's it. Now, how can I obtain AZ? Well, I just drop the perpendicular from A to the Z axis. How can I obtain the point of AX? Well, I can either directly drop the perpendicular or uh, to this axis, or I can drop the perpendicular to the plane x, y plane, and then from this perpendicular within the plane. Same thing with this one. Um, you just have to imagine it in the three-dimensional also. Uh, this is not maybe the very best picture, but it does represent basically the way how we are dealing with uh, any point in space. So, um, how can it be more uh, graphically, okay, let's consider this is my vertical z-axis, this is my x-axis, and the perpendicular to the x-axis is my y-axis, right? So if point is somewhere here, I can drop a perpendicular to this, this, and, and this. And these three points have three coordinates. This triplet is the coordinate of the point. Now, um, we have actually um, now, in two-dimensional case on the plane, we have quadrant. In this case, we have octant, octants. Um, this plane divides the space in two, right? And on this plane, I have four quadrants, because this is a two-dimensional Cartesian system. So all these four quadrants define, on the positive side, where the Z is positive, the corresponding positive um, Z positive octants on the space and whatever is below this plane would be again four quadrants, uh, four octants which are negative, so eight altogether, that's why it's octants quadrants, four octants, eight well that's it basically, this is a Cartesian system in three dimensional and it needs three, as I was saying coordinate systems now, mathematics in a purely abstract fashion can consider not only uh, pairs or triplets uh, of uh, coordinates, it can consider actually something like this. A point in an n-dimensional space. We cannot have a visual representation. Even with three-dimensional representation, we have a problem representing on a flat 
uh, whiteboard. Now, we can actually have a point, an abstract point in n-dimensional space, and the higher mathematics are actually um, studying uh, the properties of n-dimensional spaces. All right, next, what's next? Next is polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are on the plane only. So, that's very easy. How can I find a point on a plane using the polar coordinates? Again, we have a origin. We also have a ray from this origin, which is called polar axis. Now, any point can be characterized by two things. Let's draw a ray from the origin to our point. Now, we can start measuring this angle from the polar axis counterclockwise to the position of this particular vector. That's how we define the direction where A is located on this particular plane relative to uh, origin and the polar axis. Now, once we found the direction, we can find the distance from the origin. So if it's this point, for instance, then this is my ray which goes from A to B. This is my angle I have to turn my polar axis to get to this direction. And then this length characterizes the position on this line. On this line. So um, the usually uh, you're using R for a distance and phi for uh, the angle. Uh, sometimes instead of R, they're using uh, Greek letter rho. Well, that's basically it. It's kind of simple, but less convenient, I would say. Uh, Cartesian system is by far the most used in mathematics. Now, what else can we say? Let's talk about system of coordinates in the space. We were introducing the Cartesian system, but that's not the only one. We can have a combination of the polar and Cartesian system in the, in the following way. Again, let's imagine that we have a plane and a, a, a z-axis which goes up from this plane perpendicular to the plane. So this was our um, Cartesian system, right? Now, instead of using x, y on the plane to identify the position of this point, I can use um, uh, I can use polar uh, polar coordinates. So this would be my polar axis. Forget about this. This would be my polar axis. This would be my direction to the point A. So I need angle and the distance. So the point on the plane would be identified by the polar coordinate. Now, from the plane, I can go to any point in the space vertically. So if my point in the space um, needs these cylindrical, it's called cylindrical, by the way, cylindrical coordinates, then what I do is I project it to this basis, uh, uh, ba basic plane, the fixed plane which I have. This point has polar coordinates, which means we can have r and, and, and phi. And then z coordinate, it's called altitude um, h. So these three characteristics. So from point, we drop down the projection onto this plane. In the plane, we have polar coordinates. And uh, the height or altitude from this plane it can be positive or negative, depending on where it is relative to the positive direction of the z-axis. Um, this last component is added. So that's cylindrical coordinate system. Why? Because it's kind of rotary 
uh, in uh, on the plane because it depends on the angle, and then it goes up like in a cylinder. Now, the last one which mathematicians sometimes use in space is a spherical um, coordinate. Now, the the spherical coordinate is the following. Um, Again, let me try to, to, to draw it this way. So you have a point in space. Again, drop the perpendicular to this plane. And we can identify this direction by this angle on the plane, almost like in the polar system. But we are not considering right now this length. Instead, we are considering the length from the origin directly to the point. And we also need another angle between this vector and the z axis. I think it's called azimuth. Uh, yeah, this is called zenith. The direction, the vertical direction is called uh, uh, zenith. This angle, I think, is called azimuth, and I forgot how this one is called. It's a rarely used uh, system, but it also allows you to define, um, based on the distance and two angles, um, I forgot what's the, I think it's theta, and two angles, it allows you to identify the position. Rarely used. I will never probably use it in, in this course. But anyway, what's important is, as you have noticed, um, both Cartesian and polar system on the plane are systems where you need two numbers. Um, all coordinate systems in the space, you need three numbers. Now, is it coincidence? Um, actually not. Because there is a concept of dimensionality. Our space has three dimensions, which means no matter how we want to identify our point, we need some three numbers. Uh, three uh, linear numbers, or uh, one linear number and two angles, or two linear numbers and one angle. So whatever the combination is, we need three numbers. Because this property of our space to be three-dimensional it depends on the space, not on the coordinate system. It's called dimensionality, property of the space. Same as the plane, plane has a property to be two-dimensional, no matter what kind of um, system of coordinate we are introducing. I would also like to very briefly talk about geographical system, longitude and latitude. Just for your information, again, not because we are going to use it. So we are, we live on something which is almost like a sphere, our planet. How can we identify the point on a sphere? Well, here is how they do it. First of all, we have two diametrically opposed poles. We call it North Pole and South Pole. That's number one. Now, if you draw the line, it goes through the center of the sphere, right? If you, in the middle, draw a plane which cuts the sphere in half, perpendicular to the axis. This is the main axis, north-south axis. And the plane is perpendicular. It's called equatorial plane. And this is equator, which is an uh, intersection between this equatorial plane and the surface of the screen. So this is equator. Now, any plane which is parallel to this equatorial plane cuts a line on the surface of this sphere called a parallel. Now, on the other hand, this is an axis, right? I can have a plane which is going through the axis, actually half a plane, where this axis is a border. So it goes something like this. And its intersections are meridians. So all we need to do, actually, to identify a point on a plane is to find 
which parallel it belongs to and which meridian it belongs to. Very easy, right? So, how the parallels are measured? Well, let's draw a line from the center to a point on the parallel. And at the opposite points to equator. Now, this angle can be a characteristic of a parallel. So, the equator itself is a parallel um, which has a zero degree. It's measured in degrees, these angles. And the parallel which goes basically around this north pole will have 90 degree. So the parallel can be characterized by a degree from 0 to 90, but we have to say whether it's towards north or towards south. So this is a latitude. So latitude is a number of degrees north or south, north latitude or south latitude, um, of this angle from this point to this point, where the parallel is. That's how we identify the parallel. Now, how can we identify the meridian? Well, one particular meridian which goes through London is called zero meridian. And then any other meridian can be actually uh, measured again by the angle from this meridian, how can we turn the plane? How, how many degrees we have to turn the plane? This way, which is eastward actually, or westward. Now we can do it up to 180 to the, towards the east and 180 towards the west. So that's how the longitude is measured. So we have east-west longitude from 0 to 180, and we have north-west, north-south uh, latitude, and each one is from 0 to 90 degree. Well, that's how we measure our position, that's, that's how we identify our position on, the, on, the, on our planet. In reality, the Earth is not really a sphere, so it's slightly distorted. It's kind of an ellipsoid, but anyway, the system is slightly distorted. But the, the main sense of the whole system is exactly this. Well, that's all I wanted to say as, a, as an introduction to what kind of coordinate systems exist. Um, most likely, in most cases, I will use the Cartesian system. In some very rare cases, I will use uh, the polar system of coordinates. Probably never I will use spherical or cylindrical. So that's it. Thank you very much. I do suggest you to review this uh, in the notes. Notes are um, quite detailed just to have a more or less good understanding of what we are talking about. Thank you very much.